Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode in I Did What God Told Me To Do, and I got everything that I was asking for. And in this point in time, um, I have posted a video, and I will show you guys like right over here. So over here is the video that I posted, and this video I posted... And I was literally asking anybody that was atheist, agnostic, or anybody that didn't believe in God to ask a Christian a question. And which I originally posted on TikTok. And to my surprise, I didn't get anybody to even ask me any questions. So several days later, after I posted it, I was like, God, okay, why isn't there anything like this? And it came to me. To post it on YouTube. And YouTube, you guys, you guys really, really, really came through. And the reason I say that is I got multiple comments, very good questions, questions that I understand why somebody that doesn't believe in God would ask them. But as a Christian, I know my answers to. I know the answers to them and the truth and so on and so forth. So I'm really excited to actually get into a series like this. And this one is titled... God hates everybody because it is the first comment that stuck out to me when I was reading through the comments that I really, really, really had my spirit stirred to answer. So I'm going to go into answering that. If you haven't seen the video, go watch it. I will link it below. It's really just a 15 second video asking people to comment, but if you want to comment as well, go to that video and I'm going to be answering questions. So literally, it's the first comment that comes up, and it says, well, it's supposed to say, if he is a creature of love, why does he hate everyone so much? And the first thing I asked was, before I make this comment, you know, why do you think that he hates everyone? But um, the answer that I got, which, let me get down here to it. Um, when I asked the question about, you know, why do you think he hates everybody? And they talk about gay people, trans people, atheists, and anyone that doesn't believe in worshiping. You're going to see a lot of my Christian background, scripturally, theolog theologically, those kinds of things. Don't end the video too soon because each thing that I bring up is really important, not for my argument's sake or anything like that. But my answer in general is very important to listen to whether you do believe in God or you that you don't believe in God. And it's just to make you guys think and to be able to understand where we as Christians come from. We talk about certain doctrinations and certain parts of the Bible that somebody outside of our faith would be like, mm, that doesn't make sense. So, we're going to talk about that in the video. I've been working on this for it feels like an hour now and it just hit me to start completely over so I'm gonna let the Lord lead I might not even have to use any of the notes that I have wrote down or where that God is leading me I don't know I hope and pray by the end of this that I'm able to at least speak to one person for God like God speaks through me to somebody. I pray that with all my might because God did give us free will on this earth and the free will to choose whether or not that we follow him or we follow the world worldly things and I'm choosing to follow him and to follow where he leads me. So the question itself was if he is a creature of love why does he hate everyone so much? And I as you all saw, I ask, well, what makes you think that he hates everyone? So first off, you can't use a term like everyone when not everyone's included. God loves us. Believers and non-believers. He loves us. He truly and utterly does. The difference is between those that believe and those that don't believe is the believers are actively trying to run from those sins, run from the sin of this world, run from worldly things and running towards Jesus and trying to live their life on this earth 
like Jesus did. Which none of us are going to be 100% perfect because we obviously aren't, each, aren't Jesus. Jesus was the only ever perfect human being on this earth. He was sinless. But the examples this person gave, which I understand and know that this is a reason that a lot of people run from God. Because they don't understand why he can't accept those that are gay or trans or even accept those that are atheists and don't believe in him so here's my thing think about it in a human in a human way so if you were having this house party and you invited people that know you and loved you and believed in you and you had a bunch of people show up that never believed in you and don't truly know you only know of you would you let those people in? Would you let a complete stranger that doesn't even know or believe in you in your house? If you would, we need to have a separate talk about that because stranger danger. <laughs> Which that was supposed to be a joke to lighten the mood. Not trying to offend anybody. But on the other hand, why would God want people in heaven or souls in heaven Worshipping and singing and praising praising Him. They don't believe in Him. Li the souls living out eternity and happiness and joy and no suffering. Because they believed in Him. Because they didn't run away from Him. And as I've said... And all the other videos that I was recording, and I'm going to say in this one now. God gave us a free will. We were given a free will to choose whether or not we go to heaven or hell. And whether or not we do or don't believe. Just like any good parent. When we become an, an adult, they, we, they allow us to make choices. They give us the guidance. They give us rules throughout our life. They give us guidance. They give us the rule book. But we still have free will to make our choice of where we're going to do, what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, and what our lifestyle is going to be like. And God gave us that same free will. We're given a free will to choose whether or not that we are going to run from sin and run from the world and run towards Him and spread the good news of Jesus Christ. We've lived our earthly life doing the things that God has led us to do and we go to heaven. That we're able to go into heaven because we've accepted Jesus. And that we have took up, our, took up our own cross here on this earth. I hope that makes sense. I'm sure for some people it's not going to make sense. And I fully understand that. Because if you don't grow up or have had years or around people that discuss the Bible and God and how he is... You're not going to fully understand it. And I get that. I'm not going to discount that. I want to talk about though. That a lot of this right now. Especially for the gay and the trans people. That this thing that's going on. Where these people. There's people that are completely against them. Hating them. Hurting them. Everything. That claim to be Christians. They are not Christians. There's a difference between disagreeing with somebody's lifestyle and being a Christian. I can disagree with your lifestyle and the choices that you make. But I can still love you. And that is what a Christian is called to do. You are still called to love somebody. Just like God still loves them. He's waiting patiently for them to come back to Him. And as Christians... We are on this earth to love one another through thick and thin. I'm not saying that we need to be walked on. Because I know somebody's thinking that. I know somebody just thought that. That, oh, well, they're Christians. They just get walked all over and blah, blah, blah. No, we don't get walked all over. We follow what God is showing us to do and telling us to do. And what the, the Spirit's stirring in us to do. We stand up for ourselves. Some people stand up and hate 
others stand up in love. And God called us to stand up in love and that he will provide the rest. There's a new and an old covenant. The old covenant was made with Israel back during the time of when the book of Exodus was written, where they were making their massive exodus out of Egypt, out of slavery and bondage. But the old covenant was made between God and his people. And during the old covenant, God was able to come down on this earth due to the fact that in the temple or the tabernacle, depending on what time period you are thinking of, during the Old Covenant, God came down to the room of where the Ark of the Covenant is, with the mercy seat. And the only tribe that was deemed worthy enough to be the priests and such in these temples was the Levites, the Le- the tribe of Levi. To go in, they had to do certain things. They had to wear certain things. They had to wash a certain way. They had to walk a certain way to even go in to be around God because sin could not be around God. They had to perform certain sacrifices before going in to make themselves holy to go in to our Holy Father, God. So, and then also, you know, he gave us the Ten Commandments, rules to follow. And then when you get into, like, Leviticus and all of them, they give the rules and such and the how you're supposed to do certain sacrifices and so on and so forth. I know a lot of people don't like to read it. But with the Old Covenant, there was a renewal in Deuteronomy. With the second generation that got to go into the land of Canaan, into the Promised Land. And with that renewal, God then was then again in with them. And as the years go on, you get your major prophets like Elijah and Daniel and all of them that God speaks through. And then you start going into some minor prophets right before the 400 years of silence from God, from Israel. And throughout all of those minor prophets and the major prophets, especially, you know, when you get into those minor prophets with Babylon, you know, taking over Israel, taking them captive, um, and such, you have the different prophets of God that would speak, hey, you need to turn around, you need to repent of your sins, you, you, we need to turn back to God and go back to what we were doing to follow the laws correctly and do the things, you know, on and on and on. And obviously they didn't. The last prophet to speak, or at least the last that we know of historically and biblically, was Malachi. And then the 400 years of silence came from God. A lot of them were taken back into slavery again. I mean, all kinds of things that we can't even fathom. And you see, even through all of this, God didn't hate them. He just wanted them to come back to him, to turn back to him so that the good could continue to happen again. But Ed, the more they lived in sin, the more the sin multiplied and the more Satan had a field day with all of them and all of the things that they were doing. So that brings me to the new covenant, which for those that don't believe, obviously I'm just going to do, I mean, I'm sure some of you all know of Jesus and know of his ministry and some of you may not. And that's okay. I'm going to do a a quick synopsis here. So after the 400 years of silence, John the Baptist was born and then the Messiah, Jesus. John the Baptist was another prophet before Jesus. And John the Baptist himself even baptized Jesus on this earth. As we go through three years of Jesus' ministry, then Jesus is crucified. So he was being blasphemous, even though... He wasn't. He was, the, he was the son of God. Literally the son of God. <laughs> but he was being blasphemous. And they didn't like that he performed miracles on Sunday, on the Sabbath. The new covenant and the old covenant. The old covenant had blood sacrifices and so does the new covenant. But they're different. The Old Covenant had blood sacrifices such as animals, certain animals for certain sins, certain amounts, type of animal, whatever, for all the sins or different things. Which, obviously, you go into the Old Testament, there's a, there's a spot. And when you get to the New Covenant, there's one blood sacrifice. So, think about this as 
a parent, even if you're not a parent, if you had one child and it was your only child and you loved the world so much that you gave that child to die for them, humanly could you do it? And the answer for everybody should be no. Humanly, I don't think anybody would be able to give up their only child to save or give people the choice to be saved and to be able to come to heaven and live with you. God loved us so much that with the new covenant, he not only included Israel and his people, but Gentiles, which would be us. And I say us as in anybody outside of Israel. He loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, not only for the people that he chose to be his people, but for the Gentiles and everybody outside to give everybody the chance to know his son and accept his son as their Lord and Savior so that they would be deemed holy enough to be able to go live in heaven after death. Their souls go to heaven after death to be with God for eternity and praise and worship him. Now, just accepting is not where it stops. Your salvation is always, yes, always going to be there unless you denounce him. But you cannot go through the rest of your life continuing to sin and to do the sins that God has told us not to do. And if you go to, let's see, it's Galatians, which some of you all watching this probably don't have a Bible because you don't believe. But <laughs> I'm not saying that in a mean way. I'm just saying, like, I'm making this video for non-believers and believers too. But for any of the believers that want to look... It's Galatians, or even non-believers that want to look. It's Galatians 5, and it says, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one and to another, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led by the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are of these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lavishlessness, idolatry, Witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedi seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such a like, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in the time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Again, such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. To me, that was important to read because there's flesh here on earth. We live in a world of sin. Has been since the beginning when Adam and Eve screwed that up for us. And I say screw that up just so you all know, yes, they screwed it up for us when they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. At that point in time, all they knew was the fruit of the spirit that I listed off. Love, peace, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, meekness, and temperance. That's all they knew. When they ate that fruit, they brought in a adultery. The fornication, uncleanliness, the lavishlessness, which, which eventually down the road, the witchcraft, the idolatry, the hatred, jealousy, guilt. All those little things that we've all felt before. Yeah. That's coming from a Christian point of view. I'm telling you that. And the, God's word is in the Bible. And God's word is the truth, and I will continue to say that. I'm not going to ever say any different. I'm not going to bend my beliefs just because of anybody else. And I'm sure you feel the same way. But I hope that something, something a little bit somewhere opens your eyes. Just a little bit. 
And to close this, I want to circle back to the comment. The comment that was made about how God hates gays, trans, atheists, and those that don't believe in him. He doesn't hate you. He longs for you to come back to him. He longs for you to turn back to him or turn to him. That he is there with open arms willing to accept you and to love you. And to help you get delivered from the sins that you're living in. And I'm saying that for Christians too. You can believe in God and you can run from him. I'm an example of that. I have never stopped believing in God. But many, many years ago when I struggled with anxiety and depression, I never wanted to admit it. And I have finally admitted it a week ago. Once it's been a couple years since I've got my... Since I've got my relationship with him even stronger. And I had been running from the notion and knowing that I was running from him. I didn't want to admit it. I never wanted to admit it because I love God. And I've always believed in him. But I was ashamed because I did run from him. Those years that I was suffering with depression and anxiety to the point that it was crippling, I didn't turn to him. I ran from him. Because I believe that he gave it to me and he did not. I know that now. I wish I would have known that a little bit sooner because I wouldn't have had to suffer as long as I did. But I did. you can still be a Christian and run from God. And I'm telling you, whether you're a believer or non-believer, especially if you believe, stop running from him. Run towards him. Follow his voice. Strengthen your relationship with him so that you can hear his voice again. If you haven't been hearing his voice, he's there. He's always been there. He's waiting for you to strengthen your relationship back up with him. Because you're the one that's the not talking. You're the one that's not there. Y- you see him a little bit and then you're gone. And I'm, I'm guilty of it. I'm here right now telling you in this video that I was running from him. I'm not running from him now, but I was. I was running from him for the uh, just the, all the things that were happening in my life. I wasn't turning to him. I was turning away from him. I never lost my faith. I never lost my belief in him. But what I lost was the relationship that I had with him from child on growing up. And I lost that for many years. And I regret it. I regret it dearly. And I'm not, like, telling you this to change your mind or anything like that. I'm trying to share that I'm not this perfect Christian behind the screen speaking into my microphone. And looking at you right now that's watching. I'm not that perfect Christian. I will never be the perfect Christian. But I've vowed to always follow where God leads me. And that video that I posted that I showed you guys earlier was something I wouldn't have done. I would not have done unless God told me to do it. And I did. And I want you to know that God does love you. Even if, even if you don't believe in him, he has always loved you. He gave you free will, though, to accept him or not. And he loves you enough to still, still, I'm not, I'm saying right now that if you run from your sins and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that he will accept you with open arms, that he will bring you into his, into heaven with him and his home. And he will love you. Even, (laughs) he will be able to give you the full love. And you'll be able to love him back. It's amazing. It truly is. As a Christian. And I'm not here to bend over backwards to anybody. Or to bend to somebody else's belief. But I'm answering these questions fully as a Christian. 
and biblically as as big biblically as possible and letting the spirit lead me in this so god does love you he loves everybody he just hates sin and hates the sin that you live in he hates the sin that i lived in and live in daily but i'm truly repentful and i'm running from those sins daily and i thank god daily that he always gives us a second chance when we're truly repenting and truly trying to do better I know that it doesn't answer your question in a way that you wanted it answered or that it was even the answer that you were looking for the simplest answer to this 30 minute video is God doesn't hate everyone. He loves everyone. He hates the sin of this world. God bless you guys and be nice in the comment section. Be nice to one another. If you're going to have a discussion, let it be nice, please. Thank you and God bless you all.